Today a reader, tomorrow a leader, Margaret Fuller. With this quote, I would like to welcome all for this valedictory program of the 8th day national level FDT on reading back to basics, jointly organized by Eltai and Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College. This program was an enlightening one. The taste of reading was addressed beautifully by the speakers. It's indeed a great privilege to our institution for having organized a wonderful program in association with Eltai. Now, I welcome Dr. Vichitra Sivaji, Professor and Head of English, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, to deliver the presidential address. Good evening, dear participants, resource personnel, office bearers of LTI, and LTI members. Greetings from Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, Coimbatore. It has been a privilege hosting and being a part of this eight day FDP, Reading Back to Basics. A few words about our institution and department. Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, widely known as SREC, was established in 1994 by SNR Sons Charitable Trust and is one of the 17 institutions managed by the trust. SREC is an autonomous institution offering 12 undergraduate programs, seven postgraduate programs, and a five-year integrated MTech program in computer science and engineering. Our institution is accredited by NAC with A grade. SREC boasts of a very good research culture with an average annual funding of rupees 3.4 crores from various funding agencies. The Department of English, in addition to teaching the language, nurtures, encourages, and motivates each in individual in building their communication skills with confidence and provides necessary inputs to make them readily employable. The department also offers other foreign languages in tune with the demands of the corporate world. The department is equipped with a state-of-the-art language laboratory and functions with nine faculty members, all of whom are BEC trained and TKT certified by Cambridge University. We are also a recognized Cambridge English Language Assessment Center, offering training and conducting exams for both schools and college students, faculty and corporates. The department is in charge of the English Literary Society, the Quiz Club, and now the Reading Club in association with LTI. Various activities are conducted throughout the year and the, and the pandemic hasn't dampened our spirits. At the outset, we as a department are very grateful to the management and principal of our institution for having showed immense interest and involvement in the establishment of the Reading Club. Being an ardent reader herself, our principal, Dr. N.R. Alamelu, was the main source of motivation and inspiration. Her great interest towards reading enabled us take this giant step with courage and determination. The MOU with LTI was initiated to commence the Reading Club on campus in March 2021. Today, the art of reading is slowly declining and needs to be revived. The main objective of this movement is to encourage and enable students and faculty develop a greater interest towards reading and harvest the many benefits it offers. It should enable teachers, facilitate their learners to explore the opportunities for lifelong reading and make even the non-readers go beyond the textbooks and become lifelong readers. There is no friend as loyal as a book, said American author Ernest Hemingway. Books fire up one's imagination, provide solace in times of grief and open up the world. The importance of the reading habit is intrinsically linked to professional success as it opens up the mind to new experiences and provides new avenues of knowledge. As we all know, reading occupies a key role in almost every course of study. This eight day FTP has in fact been rightly timed and has initiated a number of insights revolving around the importance of reading among students and creating or expanding programs in technical communication. We all know that reading skills are abilities that, per that pertain to a person's capacity to read, comprehend, interpret, and decode written language. 
This skill can be highly beneficial to assimilating and responding to written communications like uh, emails, messages, and letters. Reading skills can also be important for ensuring effective written communication, which can result in less miscommunication and misunderstanding. It can also encompass several key aspects that work together to develop overall literary skills. These are all areas that pertain to education, and hence its value has 100% efficacy. These eight days have been a great platform for intense learning. The sessions handled by renowned and senior professionals were a true learning experience. Areas covered were extensive with widespread knowledge sharing, interactive chats, and the uh, QA sessions were very lively and educative. Many would agree with me that the knowledge shared and gained are inexpressible and invaluable. It is fair to conclude that the FDP was a great success. So many people have contributed in so many ways to make this FDP a platform of realization, learning, achievement, and victory. The educative presentations and a very good atmosphere have laid the foundation for future discussions and networking. I owe much gratitude to LTI for providing Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College the opportunity to host and launch this FDP. I profusely thank them for their valuable inputs, continuous support, and coordination before and during the FDP. I thank the management, principal, coordinators, hosts, and moderators for supporting the FDP in many direct and indirect ways. I thank all the participants for their interest and participation. The eight-day national level FTP on reading back to basics is a major initiative with similar ones being planned for the future. As a closing note, no matter how busy you may think you are, you must find time for reading or surrender yourself to self-chosen ignorance. To all those who contributed to the FTP, thank you for all your excellent work. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. May I now request Dr. Ram Bashi, Joint Secretary of LTI, to present the reading vision of LTI. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I hope I am visible and uh, audible too. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So, uh, at the outset, uh, I would like to state that uh, I am a proud, uh, proud to be an LTIian. So, on behalf of LTI, uh, I am going to tell you about the LTI. Okay, so regions and the missions of the LTI. So, before that, I just want to say some. Uh, some. Uh, I want to talk about how this association was started. So, our association uh, had a humble beginning, and has grown into one of the largest uh, professional association of teachers. Uh, in the world, just like a, a tiny sheet becomes uh, in the course of time a big banyan tree. And do people may wonder, okay, how this has happened? So, well, it is quite an uh, interesting story or interesting saga. So, it is uh, interesting to note that our journal started first and our association much later. So, why and how it has happened? So as early uh, as 1965, the Journal of English Language Teaching, uh, JELT, the first of its kinds in our country was published. And uh, thanks to the one of the well-known educa uh, educationists of that time, late Padmasri Natarajan. So he really wanted to start a professional association of teachers of English. Uh, but he knew, knew that the teachers would not join uh, uh, paying some subscription without an, any kind of incentive. So he decided to attract the teachers by giving them a free copy of journals. So if they joined uh, the English Language uh, Teachers Association once uh, okay, it was started. So we know that alone uh, we can do so little, so together we can do so much. So this is how our association started. And uh, currently uh, we have uh, 50 chapters spread across all over the country and collaboration with uh, uh, different uh, uh, teachers association from the different countries. 
uh, like Bangladesh, South Korea, Malaysia, Nepal, Sri Lanka, China, Cambodia, Philippines, and uh, so many associations are uh, LTI has a collaboration with them. And uh, LTI is an associate of ITFL, uh, International Association of uh, Teachers of English as a Foreign Language. Uh, we have online discussion forums, uh, collaboration with British Council. LTI has produced some textbooks for the students. Okay. So the main vision of, of the LTI is to, uh, LTI envisions to make India a hub of ELT uh, related activities and to conceptualize the experiences of English uh, language teaching, learning. Uh, uh, so share them with the others. Uh, LTI wa want to uh, develop a movement spreading across the length and uh, breadth of the country, uh, empowering teachers to make every learner of the English a globally competitive one. So LTI also aim at becoming a recognized leader catalyst, a facilitator, and a trendsetter in spreading English literacy. So the, the mission of the uh, LTI is to provide a forum of teachers of English to meet uh, occasionally to discuss problems relating to teaching of English in India, to help teachers interact with educational administrators on the matters relating to teaching of English to disseminate information in ELT field among teachers of English, uh, to undertake innovative projects, okay, uh, uh, for the improvements of learners' uh, proficiency in English, to promote professional solidarity among the teachers of English at primary, secondary, and uh, university levels. So, ELTA is organizing different webinars for the teachers, for the students, and the uh, school, uh, the uh, professors too. So uh, I hope everyone uh, will be the part of uh, LTI. Uh, so coming, uh, I just want to say that coming uh, together is beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. Joseph Dureraj, Professor, School of English and Foreign Languages, the Gandhigram Unit. Gandhigram Rural Institute to give the valedictory note. Sir, please. Dr. Sanjay, President Eltai. Dr. Vichitra, Head Department of English, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, Coimbatore, who is also the President of this valedictory session. Dr. Ram, Dr. Lena Mahalingam. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to all of you. At the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for having invited me to deliver this valedictory address. My special thanks to Professor Ilango, Professor Mohan Raj, and Professor Ramani. Now, dear friends, for the individual delivering the valedictory address, he or she has two options. One is to summarize the key issues that have emerged from all the papers to summarize them and to suggest further directions. So this is one option. But unfortunately, since I was not there for quite a few sessions because we had regular online classes and I had to attend to other programs as well, I am not opting for the first option. Now the second option is to speak on a related area related to the main theme of the FDP. So therefore, I would like to choose the second option and I would like to speak on the phenomenology of reading for something like 20 minutes. Now, dear friends, I would like to start with a story. I would like to start with a narrative. Here are the first three lines of a short story. The short story begins like this. Ashok died on a Sunday morning. Anjali died a few years later. The doctors couldn't save her. Now, dear friends, there are three sentences. Now in the written format, as we all know, after each sentence, there is a full stop or a period. Now I am not going into that. Now apart from these periods of full stop, there are also gaps. There are also blanks, plenty of gaps. For instance, the first sentence read like this, Ashok died on Sunday morning. So what are the gaps here? 
who is Ashok? How old was he? How did he die? Did he die at home or did he die in the hospital? Was it an accident? Or you move on to the second sentence. The second sentence was Anjali died a few years later. So what are the gaps here? Who is Anjali? How old was she? And what was the relationship between Anjali and Ashok? Are they husband and wife or siblings or friends? And what happened to her? Did she die of COVID or any other complications? So dear friends, I would like to reflect on these gaps and point out a few ideas, point out a few key ideas. So the first point is when we go through a narrative, in this instance, it is a short story, we realize that there are gaps or blanks in a text. Now, earlier, the assumption was when you go through the history of literary criticism, we realized earlier the assumption was a text was thought of a unified whole, whether it was a poem or a novel or a drama or a short story. Critics argued that the text was a unified whole. But here we realize that there are gaps in a text. Now, the second point that we realize is these gaps or blanks, also known as indeterminacy, should be filled in so that we read further and the story progresses. We also realize that these gaps can be filled in different ways. For instance, when I read the story, I tend to fill in the gap in a particular way. When my wife reads the same story, the same three sentences, she tends to fill in the gap a little differently based on her perspective. Now, my daughter, when she reads the story, she may fill in the gap a little differently. So for Therefore, different readers anchored in different perspectives may fill in the gap differently. Or there is another point of view, there is another facet to this argument. A single reader approaching the text from different perspectives tends to fill in the gaps differently. For instance, today is Tuesday. When I read the story, when I read the first three sentences, I tend to fill in the gap a little differently. Now, after a week or after two weeks, when I come back to the same story, I may read these three lines and I may fill in these gaps differently. So therefore, a text is a text has gaps and these gaps have to be filled in and different readers approaching the text from different points of view may tend to fill in the gaps differently. Fine. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, at this juncture, I would like to offer a note of clarification. So far, I have been talking about gaps or blanks in the text. Now, please remember, this would apply in large measure to literary texts and not so much to non-literary texts. Put differently, wherever we talk of connotation, wherever we talk of interpretation, then we talk of gaps and filling in the gaps. And wherever there is denotation, there is not so much talk about filling in these gaps. Now, here, let me pause for a while and ask two very important questions. Who proposed the idea that texts have gaps, that texts have blanks? And whether it was a he or a she, what was his or her theoretical affiliation? So therefore, two questions. The first question, who talked about gaps in text and what was his theoretical affiliation? Now, dear friends, that takes us to Wolfgang Iser, who was at the University of Constance. And he, along with his colleague Hans Robert Jaws, he founded the School of Reception Aesthetics. Now, this was in Germany, and the school was known as the School of Reception Aesthetics. And its American counterpart was known as the School of Reader Response Theory, which was spearheaded by Stanley Fish. Now, it was Wolfgang Iser who talked about gaps or blanks in the text. Now, for the next two few minutes, let me very briefly talk about who was this Wolfgang Eiser and what were, what were his major arguments as far as the school of reception aesthetics was concerned. Okay, now Wolfgang Eiser talks about his theory of reception aesthetics in two of his important books, The Implied Reader, which was published in 1972, and The Act of Reading, which was published in 1976. So these are two of his major works. And there are two other articles, very influential articles, the affective structure of the text, which was published in 1970, and the second article bearing the title, The Reading Process, A Phenomenological Approach, which was published in 1972. So in these two books and in these two articles, Iser articulates 
his theory of reception aesthetics. Now, when I talk about the major contribution. two sides of a coin. Now, on the one side, you have the author, the artistic dimension, and on the other side, you have the reader, the aesthetic dimension. So like two sides of the coin, the aesthetic dimension on the one hand and the artistic dimension on the other. The artistic dimension is related to the author and the aesthetic dimension is related to the reader. Now, Isa very carefully argues you cannot identify the text totally with the author, nor with the reader. So he says, to quote his words, in fact, the text lies halfway between the two. Okay, So it is not a question of 50-50. So it is a combination of the aesthetic dimension on the one hand and the artistic dimension on the other. So together, they constitute the text. Now, Aiza also argued, this is the second point, what is meaning? How do we derive the meaning of a text, whether it is a poem or a short story? So Isa would tell us, meaning is located in the interaction between the text and the reader. The text alone doesn't constitute the meaning. The reader alone doesn't constitute the meaning. So it is in the negotiation between the reader and the text. It is in the interaction between the reader and the text that we derive meaning. And this is the second point. The third point, the major point, it was Isa who proposed that all texts have gaps or blanks in the text. To quote Isa, he argues, even in the simplest story, there is bound to be some kind of blockage or gaps. And he proceeds, these gaps have a different effect on the process of anticipation and retrospection. And then he argues further, different readers approach the text with different expectations. So therefore, the way A fills in the gaps may be different from the way B fills in the gaps, which may be different entirely from the way C fills in the gaps. And he adds, one text is potentially capable of several different realizations. The way a reader looks at the tempest may be different from the way another reader situated in the African continent may look at the tempest. So it is the same text. But then depending upon the perspective that you bring to bear on the text, your reading is different. And finally, this is a major idea. This is a major insight of Isa. He talks about implied reader. Later, I will talk about the different varieties or the different categories of reader. But it was Isa who proposed the idea of an implied author, wherein he argues that the text chooses its own reader. Because he says, the text creates for itself a reader through the response inviting structures. So dear friends, so far I have talked about three major ideas. Idea number one, all texts, particularly creative texts, particularly literary texts have a lot of gaps or blanks and these gaps need to be filled in so that the story advances or the story progresses. And different readers from different points of view, from different perspectives, from different worldviews, tend to fill in the gaps each in his own way or each in her own way. Now, in other words, what am I talking about? Now, I have talked at least for eight to nine minutes. So what am I talking about? I am talking about reading, particularly the phenomenology of reading. I repeat, I am talking about the phenomenology of reading. Now, dear friends, before I proceed further, let me very briefly talk about uh, let me very briefly talk about and clarify the meaning of the word phenomenology, because my topic for today's valedictory addresses the phenomenology of reading. So, reading is one part, and the other part is phenomenology. So, what is phenomenology, and how do we understand the term phenomenology? Now, there are two ways in which we can look at the term phenomenology. One is from a broad point of view, from a broad perspective, we can look at phenomenology as any descriptive study of a given subject. Now, let me give you a few examples. Like uh, in American universities, phenomenology of religion is one of the major departments. So what do they do? A descriptive study of religion, rites and rituals. So this is phenomenology in a broad sense. Or now we are living through a time of crisis, pandemic. So a phenomenology of an illness, phenomenology of a disease. So that would include a description of the disease and its ramifications. 
so the term phenomenology can be understood in two ways in a broad sense any descriptive study of a given subject could be understood could be construed as phenomenology now i am not using phenomenology from that point of view instead i would like to look at phenomenology from a philosophical perspective and from a narrow point of view particularly from a philosophical angle we all realize that the term phenomenology is associated with the german philosopher husserl who promulgated the idea of phenomenology in his major book logical investigations now there are three sorry there are four main ideas as far as husserl's phenomenology is concerned now he made it very clear let us not involve ourselves in abstractions let us not get trapped in abstraction so therefore shunning abstractions brushing aside abstractions he gave a call a clarion call to engage the text in a conversation or in a dialogue in other words his major slogan was return to things themselves in other words the background was philosophers were engaged in abstraction so he said no more abstractions let us return to things themselves in other words let us engage with the text now it is in this context that we have to bear in mind the cartesian legacy descartes so descartes talked about the self and the object and then he erected a wall between the subject and the object so they become two different entities now on the contrary husserl would call for a co implication of the subject and object in other words and this is the major idea this is the major insight husserl advocated what is known as dialogical hermeneutics or phenomenological hermeneutics now in the context of literary hermeneutics how do we understand phenomenological hermeneutics or how do we interpret dialogical hermeneutics now we don't look at the text in a detached manner you don't look at the text as an object an object to be deciphered an object to be dissected in a cold rational point of view on the other hand you enter into a dialogue you enter into a conversation with the text so that you can negotiate the meaning of the text and this is exactly what husserl meant by phenomenological or dialogical hermeneutics now when we apply this to reading what we realize is that whether it is the reader response theory that is the american version or whether it is reception aesthetics which is the german version version what we realize is readers become primary agents okay in other words normally when we talk about when we talk of a literary text whether it is a poem or a novel or a short story we talk about four coordinates i'm referring to m h abrams and his book published in 1953 with the title mirror and the lamp so there in the introductory chapter m h abrams talks about four coordinates of criticism namely the universe the text the author and the reader now when you look at criticism down the ages whether it is classical criticism or medieval criticism or modern criticism that is from plato to sassur and derrida also what we realize is the reader has been marginalized the reader has been neglected the reader was never never given his sort of due and on top of it we have the famous article famous or infamous infamous that is up to you to decide in 1946 the uh, two new critics winsad and beardsley they came up with the idea of impressionistic criticism and i am referring to their essay affective fallacy where they dismissed the role of the reader so it is in this context that the reader has been recognized and the reader's primacy has been emphasized so therefore what happens in the reader response theory that is the american school or in reception aesthetics the german school what happens is there is a paradigm shift earlier the focus was on text earlier the focus was on product now the shift is to process so which means we realize that we have moved from text to reading and from product to process so we have two major schools we have the american school and we have three major figures figures we have stanley fish we have norman holland and we have david blish whereas when we go to the german school we have hans georg gadamer a german philosopher eiser and joust now what are the major theories or what are the major insights of the american school and the german school 
Okay, there are seven major ideas. I will go through them very quickly. Now, the, the, the first major idea is they advocated a reader-oriented approach. They recognized the primary role or the key role played by readers in understanding the text and interpreting the text. And they stressed the temporality of reading. Reading is not something static. Instead, it is dynamic. And it is in this context that they talked about the blanks or the gaps which need to be filled in and how different readers from different perspectives, from different points of view, tend to fill in the gaps differently. They also argued that there can be no objective, disinterested inquiry because all reading is situated. So therefore, the context cannot be bracketed or dismissed or marginalized. There can be no transcendental perspective. So when I look at the text, I look at it from a particular point of view. When my colleague looks at the same text, he looks at it from his own point of view. He brings to bear his worldview on the text. And the, the last three points are interesting. Whether it is the reader response theory or reception aesthetics, they tended towards a politics of liberal pluralism, which advocated the rights of readers. And whether it was Fish or uh, Iser, they talked about different kinds of readers. They talked about the real reader, the ideal reader, the virtual reader. Then Umboto Iko talks about the modern reader, the super reader, the informed reader, and Judith Fetterly from a feminist point of view talks about dissenting reader. Fine. Now, students, particularly listening to me, they may like to ask me a question. If you advocate the point of view that different readers from different points of view read the text in their own way and interpret the text in their own way, now, the question they may like to ask me is this, will this not lead to relativism? Will this not become arbitrary? Like any reading goes, any interpretation goes, of course, I can always justify it. Maybe this is from my point of view. So how do you correct it? It is against this backdrop. It is in this context that Stanley Fish talked about interpretive communities, a community of well-informed readers. They would be the judges. They would be the arbitrary. So therefore, Fish assures us that this will not breed relativism, nor will it breed arbitrariness as far as reading is concerned. So dear friend, so far I have talked about two major issues. I talked about what is phenomenology and how phenomenology has promoted, has advocated a dialogical hermeneutics, which calls for a dialogue or a conversation between the reader on the one hand and the text on the other. And in this process, in this bargain, what happens is meaning is negotiated. That is the first point that I emphasize. The second point is I talked about, I highlighted the key tenets or the major arguments of the reader response theory or reception aesthetics, which emphasize the role of the reader in the reading process which itself is a dynamic process because it involves two poles or two facets or two dimensions. On the one hand, you have the artistic pole related to or connected to the author. And on the other side, you have the aesthetic pole or the aesthetic dimension, which is associated with the reader. So it is a combination. It is a synergy of the artistic pole and the aesthetic pole that would constitute the reading process and the text file. Now let me conclude. I have been talking about reading. I have been talking about the phenomenology of reading. Now the question is, what do we learn from the phenomenology of reading? What does it teach us? What is it that we learn from the phenomenology of reading? I would like to talk about four points and with that wrap up my presentation. Okay, the first point I would like to refer to a Belgian critic by name Poulet. It was he too who talked about phenomenology of reading. Now, what he does is, in the first few pages of his essay, titled The Phenomenology of Reading, he makes a distinction. He makes a clear distinction between objects like sewing machines, statues, tables, chairs on the one hand, and books on the other. He says, I cannot talk to a table. I cannot talk to a sewing machine. Even if I talk to a table or a chair or a sewing machine, that will not respond to me. 
but the text is not like that. Particularly a literary text is not like that. I can talk to a literary text, I can converse with a, liter a literary text, I can talk to a poem, I can talk to a short story, and I'm pretty sure that the text will talk back to me. So therefore, fully in phenomenology of reading, he talks about the peculiar nature of books. And because of the peculiar or the individual nature of books, there is the opportunity to engage in a dialogue with the text and not look at it as a cold object which needs to be dissected, just as a scientist would do in his or her laboratory. That is the first point. And the second point, I will take three, I will take three minutes and then I will wind up. And without the reader, there is no text. It is here that I would like to take you back to Jaws and Ingarden. Ingarden was a Polish phenomenologist. He would tell you that text has potential, but it is only potential. It is dormant, it is latent. Only when somebody picks up the book, reads the book and breathes life into the book, what happens is, what was dormant in the text, what was latent in the text, that is the potential, becomes actualized or realized. So therefore, Jaws would write, the historical life of a literary work is unthinkable without the active participation of its addresses. So therefore, the primacy of the reader has been underlined, has been emphasized. And the third point that we have to realize is, reading is not something static. On the contrary, reading is a dynamic process. Now, why do I say, why do I argue that reading is not a static process, but instead reading is a dynamic process? When I started my valedictory address, I pointed out that all texts have gaps, and these gaps need to be filled, need to be filled in. Okay? And every time to every time you read, every time you come across blanks, every time you come across indeterminacies. Depending on the horizon of expectation, a phrase used by Jaws, you fill in the gap, okay, depending on the context. And you constantly do this, and it is from this point of view that Jaws would argue that reading is not something static, instead it is dynamic, and eventually leading to what Gadamer, the German philosopher, would call fusion of horizons. Now finally, I would like to raise a question. Now, as a reader, as a teacher, as a reader, as a student, I read a lot of texts, I read a lot of poems, I read a lot of short stories, I read a lot of novels, I read a lot of texts. Now, how do I distinguish a good text from a bad text? How do I discriminate between a poor text and a good text? Now, the phenomenology of reading would help us in this way. So I will highlight this and with this I will finish. Now, what Dowds would tell us is, he gives us a clue, and this is akin to, this comes very close to Roland Barthes' writerly and readerly text. If a text tells you everything, then you lose interest in the story, because everything has been told you by the author himself or author herself. On the other hand, imagine that a text gives you only 30% of the story or only 40% of the story and allows you and encourages you to imagine the rest of the story, then you get interested, you get hooked on to the story. So Box would make a distinction between a writerly text and a readerly text. Now in the same vein or in the same breath, Jouts would argue if it is very easy to fill in the gaps, then it is not a very good text. On the other hand, the gaps and you can fill it in in very many ways and even when you fill in with this particular manner or that particular manner you're not satisfied and the text also is not satisfied meaning the text has enormous potential and it allows you to fill in the gaps in very many different ways and even then you have not completely filled in the gap Jaws would say that is a good story. So therefore, dear friends, now that I have talked about the phenomenology of reading, as the concluding part, I would say, when we read a text, especially a literary text, we shall dialogue with the text. Let us not look at the text as an object, like a table or a chair, from a cold, rational point of view, with a view to dissecting it, 
on the contrary we will engage in a meaningful dialogue or a meaningful conversation with the text and let us work hard to bring to fruition or actualization what is dormant or latent in the text thank you thank you very much thank you sir for your impressive and in informative valid pre note now i would like to invite dr manoj kumar nanda assistant professor the technological institute of textiles and sciences haryana to present his action plan good evening everyone i hope i am audible to all of you yes sir you audible yes uh, esteemed chair of this valedictory session chief speaker coordinator and dear colleagues i would like to begin by saying that i am a very keen learner and i don't miss any opportunity whether it's a workshop or a webinar and i have attended many fdps sponsored by various authorities and agencies however this fdp has uh, brought incredible learning experience for me and uh, that too in a variety of ways when i had joined this fdp i had some goals which i have of course achieved and it would not be an exaggeration on my account to say that the sessions by amazingly erudite resource persons have made me rethink what i have been doing so far trust me it has transformed my attitude towards reading and when i talk about my action plan of course i will implement whatever i have learnt in my classroom in academics but my action plan goes beyond classroom beyond personal space so the first item that i have on my action plan is that i would like to share whatever i have learnt with the members of my department i will also ask them to seek opportunities like this to upgrade themselves then i would like to have an eltai chapter in my district because the nearest eltai chapter we have is in delhi or jaipur so i will reach out to neighboring colleges located nearby and i will speak to my colleagues there and then we will approach eltai for creating a chapter here the third item that i have on my card is proposal for collaboration with eltai for harnessing maximum learning opportunities for my colleagues here and for my students then what i would like to do is i would like to include whatever i have learnt in my routine teaching of course i would also ask my phd scholars to associate with eltai so that they could uh, learn new things and then uh, i have already proposed uh, to I, to aict all india council for technical education for a seminar and i am yet to suggest topic so of course uh, the topic that i'm going to choose will be related to this fdp and then uh, uh, my aim is to address uh, some of the concerns which have been raised in the form of questions during fdp and then uh, finally i have planned to edit a volume on the theme of this faculty development program and very soon those who have attended this faculty development program will receive call for contribution this book will offer them a chance to reflect their ideas and experiences that's all i've got to say thank you everyone thank you eltai for giving me space thank you thank you sir now i would like to invite dr vishnu school assistant english zilla parishad high secondary school telangana to share uh, share his uh, action plan hello sir you am i audible ma'am yes sir yes sir you are clear voice is clear audible yeah no okay so respected dignitaries of eltai experienced professors as resource persons who imparted and handled valuable sessions in a day orientation on faculty development program on back to basics in global language of english language and my co participant fraternity of english a pleasant uh, good evening to all i am noone vishnu a school assistant in english uh, since 2005 in nalgonda district of telangana state in fact all school assistants in english uh, are posted at uh, jilla parishad high schools or government high schools in both uh, telugu states so presently i am working uh, at uh, 
జడ్పి జిల్లా పరిషత్ హై స్కూల్ విత్ తెలుగు మీడియం సో వేర్ మై స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆర్ స్ట్రగులింగ్ టు టు ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ దేర్ వ్యూస్ టు స్పీక్ సో ఐ రిసీవ్డ్ ద మెసేజ్ అండ్ రిజిస్టర్డ్ ఫర్ దిస్ వర్క్ షాప్ యాజ్ అ పార్టిసిపెంట్ అండ్ అప్డేటెడ్ మై సెల్ఫ్ ప్రొఫెషనలీ యాజ్ అన్ ఆన్లైన్ అండ్ ఆఫ్లైన్ టీచర్ బై అటెండింగ్ ఆల్ ద సెషన్స్ so i will implement uh, so i would like to share a good news uh, with, with you all that uh, the government of telangana state has decided to reopen all the educational institutions in the state from kg to pg from tomorrow onwards so it's uh, an advantage for all the teachers so whoever uh, attended this program including myself so to implement whatever i learned at this webinar uh, webinar sessions in this program to implement them effectively with my school children to enhance the skills of uh, ls or w and uh, the most attractive and impressive uh, words i learned from this program is the the, the acronym paris so which uh, uh, which is meant predicting asking questions retelling inference and summarize so these are given by dr vk kartika ma'am so thank you very much ma'am for uh, providing us a wonderful amazing uh, acronym so which was not uh, heard by me earlier and uh, dr patil's uh, beautiful work uh, words uh, pregnant and uh, precise which may, which can be used in different manner so uh, they are very uh, meaningful and uh, wonderful vocabulary so to my point of view i would like to i would like i would like to implement whatever i learned in this in these all these sessions from the day 1 to day 8 and i would like to implement all these things at my present place of working school to enhance my students uh, uh, skills of uh, uh, studies so particularly in english language because they they are to be they are to be encouraged in improving their uh, learning standard in english language so i uh, my sincere gratitude to eltoy uh, for this uh, given opportunity and uh, i am very thankful to i uh, very grateful to all the organizers of uh, elta of india so i hope many more uh, orientations for fraternity english fraternity to update uh, themselves and practice them at their place of working so thank you very much one and all for listening to me patiently so thank you one and all thank you ma'am over to you thank you sir may I now invite dr srija HST English Valancheri High Secondary School Palakkad to give feedback regarding the 8 day FDP Shall I Yes sir Yeah uh, <laughs> I never thought uh, I would be part of this valedictory function uh, thank you madam uh, for involving me in this valedictory function in fact uh, i would have missed this uh, wonderful fdp program uh, i must thank my colleague uh, dr sham sundar who is also the president of uh, ai south uh, hyderabad south chapter so he reminded me in the last minute so i enrolled myself uh, in the 11th hour uh, in fact i was not a member of this eltai earlier he almost every other day used to remind me to be a member of this uh, eltai so i must thank him uh, to be uh, here today uh, so it was a kind of accident that i, I am here so i would have really missed a wonderful session wonderful fdp uh, i wouldn't have i think experienced this uh, kind of uh, interaction or you know information anywhere else i think you know i must thank first of all uh, to elta and also of course uh, srec then first things first uh, uh, that was of course how i am here then 
thanks to of course technology that we are able to connect to people across india across the world uh, uh, now we can listen to i think uh, to people or to professors or to uh, people who are very much experienced in this particular field uh, from different parts of the country or sometimes i think you know uh, outside india uh, i mu we must thank you know uh, technology and particularly you are using this uh, webinar jam uh, this platform is really wonderful i think there is no need to uh, worry about uh, participants video audio and other uh, distractions uh, i think i appreciate that uh, that you have you know opted for a new platform and that is of course one thing and the second thing that i wanted to uh, uh, mention here that punctuality you know i personally hate to be late but here i i think i was reminded of my own uh, principle of being on time so every i think every session begins on time there is no doubt about it. there is no i think delay very meticulously you follow that uh, time uh, punctuality if i am late by a few seconds no doubt i would miss the name of the person who was going to present or was going to you know, the, the name of the speaker of that particular session so i will have to wait for the feedback form to come to see the person's name that's how you maintain i really appreciate your uh, time consciousness uh, i was very impressed by that i think uh, many sessions i think you know eight days almost three to four speakers a day every session begins on time you know there is no i think uh, delay there was no delay at all not even a second you know uh, on the stroke of the you know the scheduled time i was really impressed by that and almost there were no technical glitches the program went on very well i was really happy uh, to be part of this particularly that you know time sense and punctuality really impressed me all the moderators all the uh, organizers were very conscious of that i can see you know they also inform the participants to be uh, there at least 5 or 10 minutes in advance a wonderful you know uh, organization wonderful uh, team that you have i really appreciate that and then when it comes to the speakers of this fdp uh, what should i say they are all reservoirs of knowledge with vast experience you know uh, had it been offline sorry uh, one second there i clicked something yeah had it been offline it would have been very difficult to attend you know to attend this kind of program you can see many uh, many people from many states and many countries you know are able to attend this so really happy that i became a member and you know became part of this particular fdp and was able to listen to renowned resource persons you know what they were all of course not one you know i came to know by attending this program i came to know that one topic uh, like reading skill has how much potential that it has got see now you know one reading you know going to back to basics that is a simple title but how many speakers how many titles how many different perspectives how many different ways of reading a particular text amazed you know it's amazing i was really amazed to see the speakers coming up with different ideas different perspectives different angle different techniques of course including uh, uh, online platforms and online tools i was really impressed by the content the 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 th the topics and also the you know the titles that were selected for uh, each session in fact almost all so we, uh, we are really fortunate to uh, attend these kind of programs wherein i think it is unimaginable uh, a single program of 8 days uh, and there are around uh, 30 or 40 you know, speakers so i think this kind of event rarely happens i was really impressed i when i when i saw the brochure uh the flyer uh, i was wondering how come these many people are going to speak in these 8 days but you made it possible i think all the credit goes to the organizing team elta and also of course uh, sri ramakrishna engineering college and finally one more thing you know before i conclude uh i can uh, describe this fdp as a marathon event as you know a marathon is a running race of about 42 kilometers when it comes to miles it is around 26 miles so roughly if you calculate or if you count the people who are involved apparently on the screen the number would be around 42 incidentally 
the number of people who are involved in this FTP are around 42, uh, maybe one or two min plus or minus, but uh, I, I guess it is 42. So it is a marathon, uh, very difficult to organize, very difficult to coordinate, but you made it possible. You you, know, uh, you, you have done an excellent job, uh, you know, all the organizing uh, members, uh, the team members. Uh, then, you know, uh, finally, I, I came to know that there is so much to explore in one skill called uh, reading skill. That is, you know, the mother of all the skills, all the other skills of language, whether it is speaking, uh, listening or writing. You know, I'm very happy to be part of this. All the credit goes to the organizing team, you know, uh, this uh, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College and finally LTI. So kudos to LTI, kudos to uh, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, kudos to all the speakers and finally kudos to the moderators and organizers. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I would be looking forward to attending many uh, sessions like this. Thank you, sir. May I now invite Dr. Shrija, ma'am, to give her feedback. Ma'am? Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am, you're audible, ma'am. OK. Uh, dear organizers, the Altai and Sri Ramakrishna mission. Excuse sorry, me, ma'am. Ma ma Am I audible? Like, you're audible, uh, audible ma'am. Uh, Would you uh, please uh, switch on your video? Could you please switch on your video, ma'am? Yes, yes. Thank you, ma'am. OK. Uh, dear organizers, the Altai, the Sri, Ra Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, Kaimpatur, and all participants present here, a warm good morning, sorry, good evening to all of you. I'm Srija, a higher secondary teacher from uh, Kerala. Uh, I would like to thank, first of all, for inviting me to say a few words on this great uh, event that you have conducted. I would like to comment on the organization of the program, the, uh, the variety of the topics, and also the utility of the sessions by mm, these uh, expert artists who have been dealing the sessions for eight days. Then a variety of topics based on one single language skill that is reading is superb and I can um, in another words say super califragilistic SPRly doshes. Yes, uh, the list of a um, uh, few topics or discussions we had include comprehension strategies, benefits and differences of intensive and extensive reading, creative reading, blended reading, interactive reading, visualization of reading, screen reading, analyzing the cognitive and metacognitive skills of reading, micro skills of reading, critical thinking, uh, uh, questioning the text, questioning the author questioning the, um, the questions and uh, reading beyond the text. And then also in for the mix, reading plans, uh, reading in relation to other skills, uh, need-based teaching, transforming from one form of uh, reading to other, like gra novels to graphic novels, uh, or plays and stories to films, etc. All these help to broaden our horizons of reading and also to help us in making our classroom experience more enjoyable to our students. I felt nostalgic when one of the RPs mentioned the tactile feeling of books, the book covers, the flipping of pages and all. And also I felt uh, I had made, a, I have made a leap in the modern technological world uh, because now I have familiarized myself with various apps, websites, uh, links, and various multimodal tools, interactive um, games uh, for learners, and so and so. So I think uh, these sessions have uh, helped us to improve ourselves personally in reading and also to improve the, inculcate the reading skills in our students. Uh, some useful strategies for rural learners. One of the topics selected based on the chats of 
the participants was highly helpful for me, especially for my students. Uh, piggybacking is an entirely new area for me. I have never heard before about found poetry or cut out poetry or something like that. And that is very interesting. Now I know a, an ostentatious display of book is not anything negative because it can inculcate reading habits in a young learner, uh, either our students or our offspring. So I would like, um, finally, I would like to uh, appreciate the dedication of the RPs. They, they have done a great job. They have made their sessions very lively uh, by their in-depth knowledge as well as by making it uh, simplified so that uh, the uh, participants can follow them and interact with them. They have shown immense patience in, um, in answering the questions and also some of them have even uh, gone through the chats and uh, uh, responded immediately. It is very difficult while dealing with classes. So I, I uh, appreciate their uh, sincerity and uh, dedication. Uh, the participants too have done their role and they have uh, in, uh, made the sessions more effective by uh, actively participating in, in question answer sessions and in, in interacting with the uh, speakers. Then, yes, what I have to say is uh, reminding one of our RPs who said um, everything has to change and reading also has to change. So, FTP, reading back to basics has changed our notion of reading. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, okay. professors, for your valuable feedback. This will certainly help us in the future to conduct many such events. Thank you. May I now request Ms. M. Leena Chandriga, Assistant Professor of English, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College, to propose a vote of thanks. Ma'am. Good evening all. I thank Dr. Vichitra Sivaji, Professor and Head of Department of English, Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College for delivering the presidential address. My sincere thanks to Dr. Ram Vishay, Joint Secretary LTI for presenting the reading vision of LTI. I appreciate and also thank the participants for proposing their action plan and providing their valuable feedback towards this 8-day FDP. Special thanks to Dr. Joseph Durairaj, Professor, English and Foreign Language, Gandhigram, for the validity address. The interactive and lively eight-day faculty development program on reading back to basics reaches its culmination now. I'm honored and I deem it a great privilege to propose vote of thanks on this occasion. First of all, I thank the English Language Teachers Association of India for organizing the national level eight day FDP on reading back to basics to revive and, re and to retain the habit of reading. Next, it is my duty to be thankful to the management and to the principal of Sri Ramakrishna Engineering College Coimbatore for stepping forward to collaborate with ELTA in organizing this FDP. I'm using this opportunity to place on record our hearty thanks to multifarious speakers of this FDP for knowledge sharing and turning this FDP into a colossal event. My sincere thanks to our respected head of the department and also my colleagues in the department for extending their support towards a successful context of this program. I also thank the technical support team of LTI and SREC. Finally, I extend my thanks to all the participants from across the country for their interest and active involvement throughout the program. Once again, I thank all for making this event a memorable one. Thank you all. Thank you.